Parents often ask me what practical solutions or ideas I can uh, offer to them in terms of how to help uh, if their child is being picked on. That's actually a pretty complex question. So, first of all, I think it's important to keep in mind that there are different types of bullying. Uh, there's direct bullying in which uh, the bully is either verbally or physically aggressive face-to-face -face with the person they're victimizing. There's also social bullying, also known as relational or indirect bullying. And in this case, you usually have a ringleader who's organizing some of the other kids to either socially ostracize or spread malicious gossip about uh, a child. Then there's cyberbullying. This is where social media is being used to tease or torment other kids. Now that's a whole different area, so I'm not going to talk about that one here today. Um, I'm going to focus more on the direct and social types of bullying. One of the things I really want to encourage parents not to do is not to tell your child to just ignore the bully. First of all, just makes it sound like it's not very difficult to do. Just, you know, uh, ignore the bully. The other thing is, is that it's near impossible to ignore the bully. And as I had mentioned earlier, there's also the bully victim dance that I talked about. And that is, when children ignore the torment, sometimes what happens is it causes the bully to escalate their bullying, um, and therefore it gets more violent as they try and get pain cues from their victim. In terms of specific areas uh, to work on, if your child tells you that he or she is being bullied, one of the first things that you need to do is be supportive. Um, they're coming to you likely with all kinds of feelings, a whole mixed bag. So when kids are being picked on, they're likely to feel shame and embarrassment, um, sadness, anger, uh, anxiety, and even fear. When I talk about fear, you know, it's usually worrying about what the next day is going to bring, you know, what, how are they going to be teased or tormented tomorrow, okay? But the other thing is a fear about telling someone, because when they tell their parents, the question is, are my parents going to act and get me in bigger trouble? The other thing I want to say about support, um, when you're supporting your child, it's really important that you don't judge them. It's very important that you listen to what they have to say. And most importantly, don't feel like you have to act immediately. This is what actually scares your child, that you're going to run off to the school and act and maybe do something that's going to be more problematic. The other thing that I think is important is to understand before intervening. Okay? So you want to be able to gather information. If you're dealing with a situation where the bullying is quite violent, then all the things I'm about to tell you, the different strategies, you're not going to use. What you're going to do instead is you're either going to be contacting the police or going straight to the principal. Uh, this becomes an adult matter when there's a lot of violence involved. Okay? So that's really important. In terms of gathering information from your child, you want to know things like who the bully or bullies are. You want to know where the bullying is occurring, what exactly is happening. Those sorts of things are very important, specifically if you then want to go and work strategically with the school. I usually encourage this information gathering because sometimes one of the strategy is to set the bully up. Basically, if you know who it is and when it's occurring, instead of creating a situation where the child that's being targeted has to tell on the bully, you set it up so that the teacher can happen by when the bullying is occurring, and therefore the teacher can intervene without the uh, child being called a tattletale or things like that. With regard to social bullying, you also want to be able to identify the ringleaders or the kids that are organizing the other children. Okay? The other information you want to gather there is who are the other kids that have been ostracized or gossiped about because those eventually can be kids that can band together to create a united front against the, the child that is socially bullying others. I already spoke a little bit about uh, presentation style, and that's, that's very important for, for kids to work on. One of the things I just wanted to elaborate on a little bit is role playing. So over here what parents can do is either, either they themselves can do some role playing about different bullying scenarios with their child, or what sometimes really helps is getting uh, a, 
a peer or a trusted family friend or cousin that's roughly the same age or a little older um, to participate in these role plays. So over here you have your child generate a number of bully experiences that they've had or bully experiences that they worry about and then you go through the role playing so they can practice their responses. Um, when we're talking about role playing, one of the things that I think is really important is for the child to get experience both as the kid who's being picked on to try and work through the strategies, but also to take the other side and actually pick on the cousin or pick on the parent and watch the different nonverbal communications that their parent is, is showing them. So looking for eye contact and posture, it's a great way of kind of learning how presentation plays a big role in, in what you're communicating to your bullies. The last thing that I want to say about role playing is that you want to be able to work up to stronger and stronger role plays, you know, where you're really doing some legitimate kind of teasing. Now it's all done, of course, with your child knowing that this is a role play so they can manage it. But you don't want to start off with very strong role plays because we don't want to traumatize you know, our own children with powerful role plays. So when you're doing this, start off gradually some teasing here and there during planned periods of time and then work yourself up to the stronger role plays. And one last thing I, I can't emphasize enough, I, I mentioned it earlier about the importance of building your child's social network. That's really important. I won't go into the details again, but certainly making friends um, and having a larger social network makes you much less of an easy target.